Yeah, hi, hello and welcome to this little Sinferno uh, walkthrough video in which I want to show you how Sinferno works, what sounds are in there and basically all the editing effects and sequences stuff as well. So let's get right into it. Uh, when you first launch Sinferno, you always see this default mix page over here. And here you can control the volume of all the four parts that you have, which are bass, synth, ambient and groove. Uh, you got your basic panning for each part. You got tuning and the amount of space, which is actually a convolution reverb, which you can set up in the effects page for each part as well. And you get for that space section, you got 60 impulse responders that you can choose here easily. And yeah, let's move on. You get an EQ per part that you can use to remove unwanted frequencies or uh, at some high end, whatever you prefer, whatever your project needs. And then you got your solo button for each part that you can listen to uh, parts isolated. And then you got your loop selection buttons. There are currently around 300 loops. And with the next free update to uh, Sinferno update to version 1.1, you will get some 100 extra loops for free as well as 50 kits. And there are some uh, other little additions that are pretty cool. For example, you get these eight user locations, user patterns for your sequencer. These are saved to disk and these are available for each part. So actually uh, these are shared per the part, per parts. So that means, for example, if I go to user D and do something here, something crazy like this, uh, and switch to another pattern and stuff like that. And I go over to the synth section, for example, you see that pattern is here again. So uh, this is useful if you have some, if you have recorded some patterns that you want to share or use uh, in other projects and stuff like that. Speaking of pattern recording, this is something I will show you in the next couple of minutes. So basically how Sinferno works is that you, you can either start with a basic kit, basic kit that you like that fits to your project. For example, let's choose the 138 Infusion. And uh, we use this preview MIDI hotkey over here to uh, yeah, actually have a listen to the kit to preview it. Let me transpose my keyboard down so that I can... Oh, almost there. Okay. So this is a quick way of previewing kits. That's, that's pretty nice. And but keep in mind that uh, the preview key won't actually uh, play kits back with the sequence. So it's just a plain loop playback for previewing or for auditioning. At the very at the very beginning of the keyboard, you see uh, these eight yellow uh, keys. These can be used to switch sequence patterns. Let me show you that quick. For example, we press this one. You see it goes to user A, B, C, D, and so forth. This is basically very useful if you are uh, in a production or if you have a, a cool pattern running and you want to change it in between so that adds some versatility to the yeah to the current kit so that you don't have to use that much instances of uh, Sinferno to save some CPU cycles, of course. Basically how that pattern changing works is you choose a part. For example, the red key is for the base part that green key for the synth part and so forth. That means if you want to change a, a sequencer pattern on the ambient part, you would press the blue key and then toggle these buttons, as you can see here, to switch a pattern. Okay, let's continue with uh, the mix page first so that you can get a feeling for it, how everything works over here. Um, as I stated earlier, these are your loop selectors. So you can either use the left and right buttons to uh, uh, change the loops for each part. Where's my keyboard? Oh, here it is. So... Or you can use the drop-down list for each part. Like this. And you can, this way you can easily combine different loops from different kits and preview them. Yeah, this is just one example. And then there's another way, which is of course the most interesting way to uh, swap presets. 
uh, those random buttons. You just press these and it will choose a random loop. And if you press the Alt Option key on your keyboard, on your computer keyboard, while pressing the R button anywhere on any part, you see it will swap all parts, or in other words, all loops randomly. And this way you can uh, get pretty interesting results as you never know which loop will come up next. The randomize button in the first base section has a special uh, kind of hidden function. So when you press the R button with the Alt Option key, it will change all the loops at once. But if you press it uh, together with the Shift, at the same time you see it will even change uh, sequence settings and stuff like that. And it will change randomly stuff in here and it will choose a random effects preset as well, plus random sequence of, uh, preset. That makes it pretty interesting and you never know what results you will get. You can hear it can sound pretty distorted, but this is uh, just because of the effects presets, since some here uh, add distortion as well. Yeah, and that alone is uh, pretty amazing and you will get some really great results in no time at all. Okay, let's choose another um, factory kit now. And let's get over to the edit section. Let me play the loop in the background. Here you have control over the amplifier, the filter, the mod we section, uh, the mod we modulation section, the pitch band range per part and the, the loop speed control as well as uh, a solid bus compressor, some saturation that you can add, which is actually the uh, contacts tape saturation, which is uh, pretty warm sounding and nice and analog. You got a low cut and a stereo with uh, adjust. Let me show you the loop speed control. This can uh, deliver great results if used, for example, with the groove section, since sometimes you have uh, a, a groove which will then sound like it's uh, somehow it's double time, but it's not. It's hard to explain, but it sounds great. We got the default playback speed now. And double time, so to speak. Let me play the whole kit. Oh, by the way, did I, did I mention that you can adjust, uh, that these uh, sliders can be adjusted for all parts at once by just pressing the Alt Option key. Oh, sorry. I'm now pressing the Alt Option key. That's a quick way of editing uh, multiple parts at once. And as always, you can see uh, you have uh, for the most uh, for important controls, you have a readout at the bottom that shows you what you are actually changing and how much. Okay, let's continue with the Modwe section in the edit page. Uh, you see the uh, those little three uh, yellow buttons for volume, low pass, and high pass filter, and these uh, will be uh, these are controlled by the modulation we on your keyboard, which I can show you quick. Let's use the same kit, and I will press again the Alt Option key to adjust buttons for all parts at once. So let me turn off everyone. Uh, okay, so now let's choose the low pass filter. Then you can use to do transitions or something and you can uh, fade in and out certain parts. For example, let's choose only the groove is unaffected now. Yeah, this is great for quick and uh, for quick changes or even for live performance. Okay, let's head over to the effects section. You got control over all the built-in effects, which are auto pen, step filter, degrade or lo-fi, screamer, distortion, flanger, space delay. Uh, sorry, <laughs> space reverb and the delay. And these are individual for each part. So 
you also got uh, this preset selector, for example, ambient A for the bass. And you can hear this amazing space convolution going on in the background. Then you have the step filter with, uh, which adds a pretty cool movement to the sound. Let me show you this with the ambient part. We got a nice little uh, guitar going on here. And this is step filter. And you can even add a step gate to it, which is a kind of a volume trans gate. As you can hear, uh, even with that alone, you can add a lot of movement to any loop in Sinferno. And as always, if you want some dirt, you can use the Screamer, which is a pretty heavy distortion, but it's just sound, uh, sounding great. Pretty heavy, pretty heavy. Okay, before we head over to the uh, most interesting thing in Sinferno, which is the sequencer, uh, I will show you the other keys that you have on the keyboard, the MIDI modifier keys or hotkeys, as I like to call them. And we had the sequencer toggle, uh, sorry, the sequencer pay, um, oh, what's up with me today? Uh, we've had the sequencer pattern change keys, where you choose a part and then change the pattern. Then you have those four black keys and these are cool because uh, these can hold the current slice uh, that is playing from the sequencer. Let me show you that with an example with uh, a groove part. No, the pattern's not that great. Let's choose another one. And let me turn off the screamer so that we don't get bleeding ears. As you can hear, the sequence is now playing. It's playing back different loops, uh, a different sample of that and different loops as well in one go. And if I now press the fourth key, that white little key, it will hold the currently slice, uh, the slice that is currently playing. Which is pretty cool to add some, yeah, add some variation to the current, currently playing pattern. Okay, next on the list, the next uh, MIDI hotkeys are Beneath uh, those black keys are uh, another uh, set of four keys, which is red, green, blue, and yellow, for the corresponding parts, bass, thins, ambient, and groove. And what those do, these are a little, kind of a little volume gate, or a, a, um, a live, live trans gate that you can play live uh, while the sequence is running. Let me show you that quickly, what it does. This one is for the bass part, this for the uh, for the synth part and so on. And the cool thing about this is that actually when you press the key, it will start the gate, uh, um, uh, only let the sound pass through as long as you hold that key. And if you start a note again, a note in whatever pattern you play, uh, whatever part, uh, that that effect is um, turned off, so to speak. Let me show that uh, on the keyboard. Where am I? Ah, okay, that's perfect. Here are my keys. These are the transgate kind of volume gate keys. As you can see, you can pretty much chop it up uh, completely. All right, let's move on to the sequencer, which is the most powerful thing in Sinferno. And let me show you what you can do with it. Uh, you see that for each part, you got your sample offset and loop offset here. You got your ray control, a slice button, a gate mode, the start and ending points for uh, the pattern. Then you got your selection of pre-made patterns. You got eight user locations, as I mentioned earlier, and you got as well got uh, you got some functions to process the data in the sequencer uh, lanes. 
okay, the, the, the basic way is to just choose a pattern that fits the current project or your style or your liking or whatever. Let's go over now on the groove part and let's choose a pattern. For example, up 32 would be the same as if you would uh, play the steps chromatically one after another. So basically this won't change the pattern, but it's cool to add some variation. Let me turn on the sequence and give you an example. We got the groove running. As you can hear, you have some instant kind of remix and an instant variation. And now we can even adjust what, uh, what loop should play. Like this. Ah, and here you can now hear a pattern which is called Titan H. And uh, here uh, the, the uh, sequence of gate mode button comes into play. What this does is basically when it's turned on, everything in the uh, in the sample offset area and the sample offset sequencer, which is zero, so which is nothing, um, won't trigger the sound. As otherwise it was re would result in that machine gun style sound because it would play all the zeros, as you can hear. And this is what the gate mode is for. Okay, let's move on to the slice mode. This is basically, it does what it says. It lets you play uh, slices chromatically on the keyboard. So we are currently in the groove, uh, in the groove section. So if I play those keys here, oh, sorry. Sequence has to be turned off for this to work. As you can see, you can play the first 20 few, uh, 24 slices of uh, 32 using the notes on the keyboard. So let's be get back to the sequencer. And now uh, let me show you the most interesting thing, which is the brand new pattern recording. So this uh, basically lets you use um, the section that you are in, the keys on the keyboard, the 24 keys per part to yeah, actually record uh, pattern data. For this to work, uh, if, um, you have to go into one of the user locations, user A to user H. Let's go to user A. Let me erase this so that you can see how it works. So the sequencer must be turned on and then you can press, for example, the SO button, which stands for sample offset so that you can record the sample offset. And as we are now in the groove, uh, in the groove section, let me transpose my keyboard. That is 61 keys, but that's not enough. Come on button. Oh, thank you. No, that's wrong. Here we are. Ah, okay. Sorry for that. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So, as you can see now, uh, you can uh, see that as I can play in the, the slices and this will record a pattern. To listen back to it, just disable that uh, SO button and play back the phrase. Let's end the pattern at 15 steps or 16 in other words. And the cool thing is what you should do with this is uh, basically you can uh, yeah, kind of play around and until you have something which is great and then you can use that later on for every project since it's safe to disk. So it's available everywhere and every time. And the cool thing is now that this does even take into account the, uh, the uh, uh, loop offset. So that means if I do something like this, and now play back the phrase. You can hear that it takes into account the uh, loop offset. And uh, why, I, why I record the, the pattern, it will uh, play back the loop at that point as well. So you can instantly hear what result you will get. Okay, it's not the best one, but it's just an example to see, uh, to, uh, yeah, see, uh, to, to show you the power that lies inside this. And it can get really, can get endless uh, great sounding loops out of this. Just by using the sample, uh, the sequencer. 
And if, for example, you, if you think you like this one, but you want to have, uh, have it a bit longer, for example, what you can do is use the new functions and, for example, do uh, a fill 16 or a fill 8. SO always stands for sample offset and LO for loop offset. So what we can do now is tell uh, Sinferno to loop that. As you can see now, it has repeated the pattern in 16 steps. We do the same for the loop offset. And now we can add some variation at the end to make the pattern more interesting. Well, that sound is not that great. Let's choose another one. Yeah, that's that's cool. Choose a different pattern here. Let me solo it. Another thing to mention is that the randomized buttons only work for um, they they do work for all the parts or for the parts that are soloed. So that means if I now press the O key to change all at once, it will only take the uh, the the parts in it to account that are soloed, which is pretty cool. So if you don't want to change the other parts, just solo them. Yes, that pretty much sums it up. That pretty much covers uh, how Sinferno works and how the sounds uh, can be played back and mangled in uh, many ways and stuff like that. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for visiting and I hope you enjoy Sinferno. Have a good one. All the best.